Joseph Parker wins a 12 round unanimous decision over Derek Chisora. I was going to say no controversy this time, but actually the scorecards were far too close. In reality, Parker won it by a wider margin than was reflected by the judges. Nevertheless, this was a marked improvement by Joseph Parker under the tutelage of Andy Lee. He was with him for the first fight as well, but he had a much longer time with him this time out. And you could see the influence there. Andy Lee obviously being a disciple of Manny Stewart. They've got that crunk philosophy, that crunk style. One thing that Manny Stewart told Lennox Lewis when they first, first started working together is that Lewis needed to come in at his natural weight because Manny Stewart said Lewis was trying to get down to the same weight he was against Razor Ruddock several years earlier. And Stewart explained to him that you're you know, growing now, you've grown a lot, you're older, your body is filled out. It's not realistic for you to get down to the weight you were when you fought Razor Ruddock at this point. And it's actually going to be detrimental for you. So coming at your natural weight, coming heavy, we saw the same kind of thing with Tyson Fury when he joined Javon Sugar Hill, of course, the nephew of Manny Stewart. All of a sudden, Tyson Fury's coming in way heavier than he had been for many of his previous fights. And it seemed to work. It worked in the second Wilder fight. It worked in the third Wilder fight. So the same thing here with Joseph Parker, not getting down so low in weight. He's a heavyweight at the end of the day. They're obviously giving him plenty of calories this time around, and it paid dividends. He was stronger in there. He was able to push Derek Chisora back. He was actually bossing the fight in the early rounds. He dominated the fight all the way through, really. Chisora was relentless and he was applying pressure, but he didn't land that many clean, effective shots. It was Joseph Parker that was landing consistently, particularly with the uppercut, but also with the left hook. His jab wasn't that effective, Parker. It was more power punches. And in fact, Derek Chisora at times was out jabbing Joseph Parker in there. But Parker did a much better job at timing Derek Chisora's attacks. You see, with Derek Chisora, he rushes at you and he comes in bobbing and weaving. You obviously can't bob and weave and punch at the same time. So the key with Chisora is to time it where you spot the moment that he's about to plant his feet. He's going to stop bobbing and weaving. He's going to plant his feet and throw his shot. That's the moment you have to punch. And you, you either need to move your head to the side so his punch goes over your shoulder or, or whizzes past or you need to beat him to the punch. And Joseph Parker was doing both. That's something Tyson Fury did very effectively when he fought Derek, Derek Chisora, particularly in the second fight, is, again, Chisora's coming forward, and Tyson Fury's not really throwing anything serious at long range against Chisora early on. He's waiting for Chisora to get right up on him, then he notices the moment is planting his feet and he's about to throw. It's all about anticipation. It's all about having that eye. And when he notices he's about to throw, bam, he beats him to the punch, or he leans back and off to the side, so Chisora's punch flies past him, then he counters, or he ties Chisora up, or a combination, all right? A uh, combination of the two. So much better boxing from Joseph Parker. Excellent instructions in the corner by Andy Lee. This wasn't like what we saw a couple weeks ago with Tiafimo Lopez's dad in the corner, just telling him to go and knock him out, go and knock him. No, this was actual proper technical instructions clear, concise, not giving the fighter too much information, but giving him just enough information so he can go out there and execute. Excellent, excellent corner work by Andy Lee. And there was a moment, I want to say around, was it 3-4, the, the first time that Joseph Parker dropped Derek Chisora, where you maybe felt as though Parker took his foot off the gas unnecessarily. But Derek Chisora is a very tough man, and you could see in the corner that Andy Lee was saying, you're going to break him down. Don't get anxious. Don't shoot your bolt too early. Take your time. Break him down. You'll get him in the end. He didn't end up getting Chisora. He did drop him a couple more times, but he didn't actually stop him. It was very, very touch and go because there were moments where Derek Chisora turned his back. He's a very eccentric character. He went to the corner every time he got hurt or dropped to try and lure Joseph Parker in. He found it easier to be able to uh, evade Joseph Parker's follow-up attacks and encounter. And there was one instance where he actually turned the tables on Parker and finished the round strong after getting hurt or dropped in that same round. I think that was around the middle of the fight. But as I say, Derek Chisora just looked very labored all the way through. He looked old, he looked jaded, and he was forcing everything he was doing. 
Whereas with Joseph Parker at only 29 years of age, I mean, for some reason, I thought Joseph Parker was at least 32, 33. He's only 29. He hasn't even hit his 30th birthday yet. So he has that youth on his side. And it certainly looked like he was the fresher guy in there. Even though he's been around and he's been in some tough fights, he looked way fresher than Chisora, who just looked jaded from the beginning, forcing all his punches. All his movements were forced. Wide swinging hooks, which is what Derek Chisora always does. But yeah, he just looked tired in there to me. And Parker looked fresh, faster hands, quicker combinations, and a much better game plan, much better technically this time around, and deserved the win. So yeah, it was a good fight as well. Much better fight than their first fight was. Hats off to both men for that, because Joseph Parker was a lot more proactive. He threw a lot more shots. He was a lot more bullish in there, right? In terms of pushing Chisora off and actually trying to hurt him. And Derek Chisora, same as last time, came to give it nothing less than 110%. I was watching a fight with my girlfriend and she said, why doesn't AJ have fights like that? <laughs> or anymore? She said, why, why don't AJ have fights like that anymore? And that's a good question. You know, we'll come to that in another video. But when you see the way Derek Chisora, who's a former stablemate of uh, Anthony Joshua at Finchley, right? When they were both amateurs. Uh, no, uh, was Derek Chisora amateur at the time? No, I think uh, uh, Derek Chisora was a pro at the time. Was he an amateur? I can't remember now exactly how it went when Derek Chisora turned pro and when Anthony Joshua was boxing at Finchley. But they used to spar anyway. Obviously, Finchley is an amateur boxing gym, but sometimes pros do train in amateur gyms here and there. And, uh, well, AJ, right, trains at Team GB. So you see Derek Chisora, the heart he shows, no quitting him. And then you see Anthony Joshua, he doesn't have the same fire in his belly. He doesn't have the same do or die attitude. And that's what it takes in some fights. We're going to see if AJ can come back with that kind of attitude, that kind of desire. We can, we'll see if he can take inspiration from Derek Chisora. Because although Derek Chisora didn't win, in terms of getting the result, uh, he got an ovation from the fans as always because he shows that kind of heart. That's what the fans want to see. Win or lose, they'll respect you if you go out on your shield like that. Tremendous, tremendous bravery from Derek Chisora. Just kept moving forward, kept swinging punches. No matter what happened to him, you'd have to nail the guy to the canvas in order to uh, get him out of there, like Dylan White did, of course, in their rematch. So yeah, good performance by Joseph Parker. I think he can use that as a springboard to bigger and better things. I'm liking this pairing with Andy Lee. You didn't see that much of the influence in the first fight. In this fight, more time together, you can definitely see more influence there. People have often criticized Joseph Parker's punching power. I've always felt like he has power there, but in the first Chisora fight, he wasn't really catching him clean to be able to hurt him. You know, the, the, he was landing much cleaner in this fight, and that's the key, landing more cleanly. So, uh, you know, the timing as well and all that kind of thing. So yeah, marked improvement here from Joseph Parker. They're talking about the potential of him fighting Hergovic in an IBF eliminator. That's a fight I really like because Hergovic has been looking for a dance partner. Nobody has stepped up to the plate. Michael Hunter went missing. A bunch of other guys went missing. But Joseph Parker would be a fantastic matchup with Philip Hergovic. So let me know what you guys think about that one in the comments below. Let me know what you thought about the Parker Chisora rematch. Did it go how you expected? I can't imagine too many people are surprised by the way it went. I know some people are not too keen on Joseph Parker. They think he lacks the killer instinct and he has lacked killer instinct in the past. But who knows what goes on in his head? Who knows why he hasn't shown the same meanness against certain fighters as he has against others? We can only speculate. But with Andy Lee, he's clearly in a good headspace and hopefully he can build upon this. And obviously Derek Chisora is not on the level of the top guys, but it was a big event, right? There was a big crowd and all that kind of thing. And Derek Chisora was the home favorite. So Parker can take that experience, hopefully and move on and improve from it. I've always felt like Joseph Parker is a talented fighter, but that drive that meanness at top level needs to be there not in every fight there are some fights at the top level where you're going to be able to get by and get the job done just being technically better than your opponent 
But in many instances, you're going to need that meanness as a reserve, you know, to fall back on. And Joseph Parker showed meanness in this fight. He's going to need to show meanness in many other fights. So let me know what you thought about his performance and where he goes from here and where Derek Chisora goes from here. Chisora is a truly old school throwback fighter. This is a guy who would have fit in perfectly well in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s when those guys, some of them used to lose two, three fights in a row and then come back and beat a top contender or a champion. <laughs> They'd have hundreds and hundreds of fights in their career. They didn't care about losses. They weren't counting. They didn't even know how many fights they had, a lot of these guys. They were just in it to make money and feed their families and they'd fight anybody. True tough guys. That's what Derek Chisora is as well. He's cut from that same cloth. A throwback fighter, a very, very tough man and a fan favorite. Based upon that performance, how jaded he looked in there, you'd be tempted to write him off. I'm very tempted to write him off now and just say, well, he's done. But I've done that in the past. After he lost to Tyson Fury, I thought, ah, he's done. After he lost to Ajit Kabayel, I thought he was done. Is he done this time? <laughs> or is he going to prove people wrong yet again? He's proven me wrong a couple times in the past. Is he going to do it again here? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Or do you think it's time for Derek Chisora to hang him up? Let me know. And to carry on the theme that I started in a previous video, I want to end with some wisdom. It goes as follows. When tyranny becomes law, rebellion becomes duty. Take care, people.